Hey guys, this is Nick and welcome to my Linux experiment. As we already did with KDE, I'd like to take a tour of one of the other major desktop environments for Linux distros. GNOME. Let's start with GNOME's history. What is GNOME? GNOME, or GNOME if you want to pronounce it that way, stood for GNU Network Object Modeling Environment, which meant it was initially developed as a part of the GNU project. It was started by Miguel de Icaza in 1997 in reaction to the creation of the K desktop environment, or KDE, which was, at the time, based on non-free libraries such as Qt. To be able to propose a fully free software desktop, the GNOME project used a GDK Plus library, which was initially created for the GIMP, hence its name, the GIMP Toolkit GTK. GNOME 1 The first version of GNOME was released in March of 1999. It sported a similar look to Windows and KDE with a bottom panel, a task manager and a main menu. GNOME 1.0 received two major updates in the next two years, namely GNOME 1.2, codenamed Bongo, which focused on user experience, adding help and documentation and new translations, and GNOME 1.4, Tranquility, released in early 2001. 1.4 was a big release, introducing Nautilus, which managed the desktop and served as the web browser and file manager, as well as Medusa, a file indexing and search module. You'll notice that there were no 1.1 or 1.3 releases. This is because these numbers are used for development releases. Production versions are always sporting an even version number. GNOME 2 GNOME 2 is still the longest running version of GNOME, with 2.0 releasing in June 2002. GNOME 2.0 revamped the whole desktop, basing itself on GTK2, the next version of its base library. GNOME 2.0 introduced a lot of changes, adding font anti-aliasing, new icons and support for theming the stock icons. The GNOME Human Interface Guidelines, or HIG, was published and served as the reference for designing GNOME applications. GNOME 2 introduced a dual panel setup, with the panel on top hosting the main menus and the system notifications, and the bottom one displaying the task manager as well as the virtual desktop switcher. GNOME 2.0 was followed by 16 releases, one every six months, lasting until GNOME 2.32 in September of 2010. Notable highlights from these releases are the addition of a CD burner directly in Nautilus, replaced later by Brazero, and a new spatial mode using one window per folder, the release of Epiphany, a GNOME web browser that still exists today and is the default on elementary OS. The creation of Evolution, a complete Outlook-like solution for email and calendar. The addition of a video player called Totem and a document viewer called Events. GNOME 2.0 was the default on many distributions, most notably Ubuntu, before it switched to Unity after the release of GNOME 3. I enjoyed using GNOME 2 a lot at the time, its three menu layout being one of the most productive I had used and its theming capabilities being pretty much unmatched at the time. GNOME 3 In April of 2011, GNOME Shell 3.0 was released. Its goal was to unify the user experience, providing easier ways to start and manage applications and windows. Its first version was not that well received, some users indicating that they forgot how stable and beautiful GNOME 2 was. GNOME 3 is still going strong today, with version 3.30 being the current one at the time of this video's recording. GNOME 3.0 redesigned the whole experience. Gone were the panels of old and the task managers, replaced by an all-in-one overview of activities, grouping shortcuts, open applications and virtual desktops in one place. GNOME 3 came with a whole new theme called Advaita, and most core GNOME applications were redesigned to better fit the new desktop metaphor. Since these changes were not to the taste of everyone, some members of the community decided to fork the GNOME 2 codebase and created Mate. Another group ran with GDK3, but re-implemented the traditional desktop metaphor with GNOME Shell extensions, eventually leading to the creation of Cinnamon. GNOME 3 still pursued its new idea of how a desktop should operate, and received a lot of updates, going through 15 new releases, one every six months. Here are some highlights. GNOME 3.2 brought synchronization with online accounts, as well as a contacts manager, and the support for web apps, which were going strong in 2011. GNOME 3.4, released in March 2012, put Documents, Epiphany and Contacts through a redesign to better integrate with the rest of the desktop, and added Applications menus, smooth scrolling support, as well as a ton of improvements in the looks department. GNOME 3.6 introduced GNOME Boxes, a virtual machines application, similar to VirtualBox. 
GNOME 3.10, released in September 2013, added a bunch of new applications, most notably GNOME Maps, GNOME Notes, GNOME Music and GNOME Photos, bringing the GNOME software collection to a whole new level. Versions from 3.12 to 3.20 concentrated on bringing smoother animations to the desktop, improved support for the Wayland Display Server and enhancing a lot of the GNOME core apps. For example, GNOME Photos could now edit pictures and GNOME Software, the package manager, could now handle updates for newer versions of your Linux distribution. GNOME 3.22 added complete flatpak support through GNOME Software and GNOME Builder, as well as support for batch file renaming in the file browser. GNOME 3.24 added Nightlight, a feature elementary OS Juno has added recently to help reduce eye strain by reducing the amount of blue lights emitted by the screen. And GNOME Calendar got a weak view. GNOME 3.26 revamped the settings application with a navigation sidebar and added Firefox Account Sync to Epiphany, its web browser. Finally, the latest version, 3.30, was released in September of 2018 and greatly improved desktop performance using fewer system resources. With it also came auto-updates for Flatpaks and a new podcast application as well as a ton of other improvements. If GNOME 3's reception was kinda cold at the beginning, many users migrating to Ubuntu's Unity or KDE, XFCE or the GNOME forks Mate and Cinnamon, nowadays it is a pretty complete desktop environment. The performance issues that plagued it in its inception are gone now, and its metaphor, while not to everyone's taste, is solid and works well once you get used to it. So since this little history tour whet my appetite for trying out some new stuff, I'll start a new video series on using GNOME. I have never tried my hand at GNOME 3, and I'm eager to see what it looks like. I hope you guys enjoyed this little tour of GNOME's history, and I hope to see you in the next one. Bye! If you enjoyed, please consider liking, subscribing, and turning on notifications. You can also follow me on Twitter at the Linux EXP. Thank you guys for watching, and goodbye!